Welcome to worship here at Blantyre Old on Sunday the 18th of October. It's lovely to join with you once again. Whether you're from here or from elsewhere, you're very welcome. Thank you for all the support for Harvest last week and for Bill's service on Tuesday. His service is still available on YouTube and in the videos on Facebook. He'd love me to say thank you to you all as well for your support, your generosity and your kindnesses to him during his training and since, and he had a great night on Tuesday, so thank you. Today we consider where our allegiances lie. Jesus really appears to be a Marmite person. Folks are always trying to outsmart him, trap him into saying something inflammatory because he's a risk to society, yet others hang on his every word. Why is Jesus such a challenging character to have around? And what is his message? With a little help from wishing wells and considering who has it all, let's explore God's word together. And we do so, first of all, with our call to worship from Psalm 96. Listen to the word of God. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and his peoples in his truth. Amen. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. We've moved indoors now as we felt that during the call to worship with the idea of praising God and with the trees around about us, it would be appropriate to do that part outside. We come now before God in prayer and following the prayer, we're going to sing a beautiful hymn called O oh God, You Are My God Alone with the help from the Scottish Festival Singers. Let us pray. Loving God, we worship and praise you. You are before time and through time. And Lord, our time is short. Yet with you, our time is eternal. Help us, God of life, to embrace life in all its fullness. To appreciate the wonder of a rainbow in a storm-filled sky. The song of the birds above the thrum of engines. The colour of autumn leaves as the hibernation of winter pushes in. For a moment, Lord, we just pause and ponder the wonder of life, the way our bodies have carried us through life, even as they ache more, the way our brains have solved complex problems and come up with meals every day, the challenges we have overcome and the milestones we have met. Lord, even in our old age, we can be grateful for simple pleasures, for the comfort of family or friend, the contributions made and to be made, for experiences remembered and shared, for memories made and stories embellished. Help us, Lord, to embrace our time, even in the midst of this pandemic. Help us to make time to enjoy the simple things in life. Help us to value the time of others. Lord, 
Let us see how to spend time with others, not just for their sake, but for ours. Lord, for those who find time hard to fill or feel the weight of time because of grief or pain, Lord, we pray a special blessing of peace and healing upon them. Lord, in this time of separation, help us find ways to bridge the distance. And Lord, for those afraid in this time of a virus, of an election outcome, of a diagnosis, Lord, shine a light and lift them from their anxiety. As we gather in this time of worship, may we grasp something of eternity and be certain that you hold all time in the palm of your hands. In your name and for your sake we pray and with your family. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Have you ever thrown money in a wishing well or in a fountain? Taking that coin, turning it around in your hand, making your wish, and then letting it go and hearing it splash into the water. There's something fascinating about staring into a pool of water and seeing the coins at the bottom, wondering what the stories, the wishes, and how long that money's been down there for. Some of you may even remember a movie, quite an old movie now, Three Coins in a Fountain, about three people looking for love. And many a child and an adult has held their coin and let it go with that wish attached. And some children have wondered if they can just jump in the water and scoop up all the coins, or maybe that was just my wee guy. Wishing whales over time became a way of raising money for charity. And I sometimes wonder if we could do that with the potholes in the church driveway. Only joking. My children always loved the idea of wishing whales and throwing coins into water, perhaps for the noise that they made or just because it's part of that magic. As an adult, I simply saw it as a waste of money. Why would you want to throw your money away into water? But children, they see something different. They see magic and, of course, the splash. There is something therapeutic about making a splash in the water, after all. Often their demands to do this made me grumpy because there was a a place in Livingston Shopping Centre where you could put your money in the fountain. And every time we walked past that, the children wanted to put their pennies in the water. But even my heart could melt as they excitedly went around looking for the best place to drop that coin in and see what other treasures there were in the water. Not always money, as I'm sure you're aware. Today's story doesn't actually include a wishing well, but it does include a coin and the perspective of money, the question of money. How we see the world around us, how we see God, how we see money is so important. What my children saw and what I saw as a child when it came to wishing wells is so very different to what I see as an adult. In the story, there is a simple answer to the question, but there's also a profound answer, a deeper answer. Tossing a coin into a wishing well isn't just an action, it's an experience. When you think about the wish that you attach to that, it becomes an experience. I see a body of water with lots of coins in it. My children held out for magic, for hope, and wondered if their wish for a sweet treat would ever be answered. Encounters with Jesus always give us way more than we expect, and certainly a change of perspective. The men in the story tossed their coin, but they certainly did not expect the outcome that they got. Mark is going to share the reading for us from Matthew's Gospel, and we listen to him now. Good morning. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. The question about paying taxes. The Pharisees went off and made a plan to trap Jesus with questions. Then they sent to him some of their disciples and some member of Herod's party. Teacher, they said, we know that you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for man without worrying about what people think because you pay no attention to man's status. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman emperor or not? Jesus, however, was aware of the evil plan, and so he said to them, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. They brought him the coin, and he asked them, Whose face and name are these? The emperor's, they answered. So Jesus said to them, Well then, pay the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and pay God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Amen.
One thing we talk about all the time is money. And one thing we never talk about is money. Abba sang, money, money, money must be funny in a rich man's world. My dad always said to me growing up that you should never joke about money. Those of you who know my dad well know that he is a complete joker. With an army background, his sense of humour can take a little to be desired. And Emma is often his target on Facebook. But he was always adamant that money was a serious issue and that you should never joke about money. We don't talk about what we earn, but we sure know how to moan about what others earn. Margaret Ferrier, the SNP MSP, no, sorry, she's an MP, apologies, is not quitting because she believes that one mistake should not outweigh all the good she has achieved. Yet the media hone in on the fact that she doesn't want to leave an £82,000 a year job. And when money comes up in church, well, we usually wince a little or try and avoid hearing that sermon altogether. But, you know, the story that Mark read for us isn't about money. Not really. Just as a coin in a wishing well isn't really about the money either, it's about the wish, the desire, the hope. This story isn't truly about money. We easily get distracted by the fact that money makes an appearance, but it's not the point. Elsewhere in scripture, we do have money stories. We have where Jesus speaks about the fact that you can't serve both God and money. You have to choose one or the other. And there are hints of that in this story. And of course, we all know the expression of putting your money where your mouth is. How we spend our money is important, whether it's as individuals, as a family, as a church, as an institution, as a business or as a community. But money in this story is really just a prop. At the heart of this story is the ongoing battle between the devil and God. It's a game of cat and mouse, if you like, where the Pharisees and the Herodians are the cat and Jesus is the mouse. They have set out to trap Jesus. We know this, it's told to us in the story. And so this is more than a challenging chat, it's war. Pharisees and Herodians are not best mates. If anything, they really don't like each other, perhaps even enemies, and therefore a very unlikely pairing. But they have a common foe. Jesus is making life uncomfortable for all sorts of people, and so they join up together. So this is an uncomfortable situation that we are eavesdropping, if you like. As you gaze in on this story, your hackles should be up, your spider sense should be tingling, and your anxiety levels rising. This is no gentle conversation. This is dark and dangerous. The men folk circling Jesus begin with flattery. Be wary of those who flatter unnecessarily, for the higher they lift you up, the further they want you to fall. These are smooth talkers and able to give you a false sense of security and then bam, you're hit with that sucker punch. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Talk about buttering them up before getting in there. Despite what they know about him, they still think they have him. Their intention is to trap him. And they have dreamed up this perfect lose-lose situation. Their own pride is about to trip them up, but they can't see that. The coin, if you like, is thrown into the wishing well, but Jesus stretches out his hand and catches it before it hits the water. He sees right through the flattery and calls it, as he sees it, hypocrisy. How easily we are flattered by man's earthly praise. Yet Jesus calls it out because his identity is centred in God and not in man. 
And this gives him clarity, an ability to see through the flattery of these men. He sees the evil intent and like facing the devil in the desert, Jesus responds with wisdom. Jesus' response is clever and yet ambiguous. Well, he never liked to make anything simple, but at the same time, the men leave amazed. They had a simple but ingenious plan to trap Jesus. Remember, money's not the focus. The undoing of Jesus is the plan, and he gets out of it. That lose-lose situation they had worked so hard to set up fails, yet they leave amazed. And they left amazed not just because Jesus had outsmarted them again, but because everything that they had said in their fake flattery was proven to be true. They acknowledged him as a teacher in the way of God and he taught them. They knew it and they knew he was a man of integrity and he had called them out as hypocrites. And they knew that they were hypocrites. They knew that they were trying to flatter him in order to put him off his guard and catch him out. So they left amazed. And wow, the conversations they must have had when they returned to their respective leaders. That coin that was to destroy Jesus, in a manner of speaking, destroyed them. The men thought if Jesus answered yes to paying tax, he was colluding with Roman rule. Not a popular option, as you can imagine. And if he'd answered no, he was a rebel against Rome. And therefore, that also was a crime. Jesus responds, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and give back to God what is God's. So at a simple level, whether you like it or not, you have to pay your taxes, whether you're Amazon, the president or just an everyday person. But on that profound level, and this will be what truly amazed the listeners, everything is God's, including Caesar. We split our allegiances all the time, from our personal lives to our community lives, through our economy and our institutions. We carve out time for God every week or every day, and then probably ignore him for the rest of the time. Yet our whole life, our whole world already belongs to God. And we are to give to God everything that belongs to God. So whether the money is in the offering bag or in the bank, it belongs to God. Whether we are at work or in church, we are with God. Everything we are and do and have belongs to God. Encountering Jesus is always an experience. Whether you go with the desire to trap him, to somehow find him to be false, or go with a contrite heart, you always meet God. And so often we find ourselves torn, caught in a lose-lose situation. And sadly, often we don't know where to go with them. And we even worry that God can't handle them. Let me remind you of another lose-lose situation in scripture. Remember the woman caught in adultery. She faced a lose-lose situation and Jesus is dragged into that one as well. Again, the wisdom of God wins the day and nobody dies that day. Can I suggest that if you are in a lose-lose situation, Rather than throw your penny in the well with a wish attached, you pray and seek God's wisdom. As we have learnt previously, God put grace in the way of systems that suffocate and stifle. This week, we add wisdom to that grace. Jesus relied fully on God, his Father, and calls us to bring everything to him in prayer and pray for wisdom. Pray for God's wisdom in a lose-lose situation. Just remember that the expectations you have when you cast your prayer might not be met the way you think. 
but your prayer will certainly be answered. For sure, God can take a lose-lose situation and find the win. But we have to trust God with them first. Remember, resurrection followed death. There is no lose-lose situation God cannot turn into a win. May you know God's blessings with you this week. Amen. We come before God in prayer with our prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving God, you made us and we are your children. You love us and because of that love, we are able to love you, our neighbour, our enemy and ourselves. Lord, in these trying times, it is hard to love ourselves. Many of us have lost our rhythm and rituals, feeling adrift and often overcritical. Lord, when we look in the mirror and are tempted to berate and hate ourselves, remind us that we are made in your image, that these are unusual times and we are doing our best. Give us the wisdom to love ourselves, that we might make choices that empower us, enable us, encourage us, and help us to live. Lord, in these trying times, it is hard to love others. They are touchy and reactive, often under our feet or shutting themselves away. Needy and anxious, they overwhelm us with their demands. Lord, give us the wisdom to see that they are just like us, struggling, hurting, out of sync with their normal routine. Help us to lower our guard and let compassion be in our words, actions, and attitudes. Lord, in these trying times, it is hard to love our enemies, whether that be politicians who control our lives and livelihoods, the economy that cripples our employment, or those who deliberately hurt and undermine us. Lord, you call us to love our enemies, and you prayed for your enemies from the cross. Father, forgive them. Lord, we pray for those we love to hate, especially in these times. Give them wisdom as they lead. And Lord, give us the wisdom to follow appropriately. Lord, in these trying times, we admit that it can be hard to love you. We want you to wave your hand and clear the air of this virus. We don't understand why you allow this suffering to happen and we want to lay all the blame at your throne. We hurt as we cry out in frustration and grief, in anger and despair. So Lord, we do lay all our raw emotions at your throne. And in that moment of letting you have our pain, we sense your love permeating our grief, your peace, stilling our restlessness and your strength giving us the power to take the next step, to build a better world, to welcome our neighbour and to love all. Loving God, we take a moment to remember before you those we know and love who are in need of you this day, the grieving, the hurting, the dying, the blessed, the poor and the confused. And so for a moment, we pause in silence and bring you our prayers. Bless our attempts to love, no matter how tentative that love, and help us love ourselves, our neighbours, our enemies and you. And may that love bring peace, comfort and healing to us and to others. Lord, may your kingdom be evident in our lives that all who meet us may catch a glimpse of you. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful blessings that you pour out upon us. Accept our offerings, no matter how small they may appear to be. For Lord, we know that you can multiply our love, our money, our gifts, our talents, so that all can come to know you. 
In your name we pray, and for your kingdom's sake we pray. Amen. We're going to sing again another old song, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun does its successive journeys run. There's only four verses in this. The original version had 14, but we'll stick to the ones that we have in our hymn book. We sing the hymn 470, Jesus shall reign. Thank you for being with us today. It has been wonderful to share worship with you. Just a couple of notices for you. Firstly, could you please hold Anne, our organist, in your prayers at this time. Sadly, her dad passed away last week and we remember her and the family in our prayers at this time. It's not an easy time to grieve and certainly not in these circumstances. Um, so just continue to hold them in prayer and seek peace and comfort and strength for them. A reminder that the church building is closed on Sunday the 25th of October, but worship will be provided online through Facebook and YouTube and on the telephone, led by the Reverend Dr Martin Fair, who's the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. I will be preaching next Sunday at East Kilbride Old for East Kilbride Moncrief as sole nominee and that service will also be available on Facebook on the um, Moncrief uh, Facebook page should you wish to follow along. Can I just take this opportunity to say thank you. We've had wee messages of support, telephone calls and wee cards and I really appreciate the time that people have taken uh, to, to encourage me despite the fact uh, that it means that I would leave Blantyre Old. So I just want to say thank you for that. I also need to let you know that the Kirk Session will be meeting on Tuesday the 3rd of November, just double checking that date there, Tuesday the 3rd of November at half past seven via Zoom. It's still not able to meet in person at this time. And the main purpose of that meeting is to make a decision about reopening the halls. The Kirk Session agreed not to open at this stage, but to review on a monthly basis. So Kirk Session will be called on Tuesday, the 3rd of November. Remembrance is also coming up. Um, on obviously, the 11th and 12th of November is Remembrance Weekend. We have a couple of ideas of what we can do around the church because obviously we can't have remembrance the way we normally would hold remembrance. So we're looking at a couple of external displays, one of which will um, invite members of the public, yourself, to come and put your poppy in a display overhanging the church wall. So just keep your eyes and ears open and there'll be more available about that shortly. We close our service with our blessing. God loves you 
whether you are winning or losing, whether you are on top of the world or in the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.